Hey everybody, welcome back to Wallet Reset. This is Mike Malbro, your host. Today I'm going to tell you guys how to find and use keywords for blogging, all right, and how you can use them to rank quickly. So, <clears throat> here's the thing about keywords that you must know, all right. Now, um, a couple years ago when I first learned about SEO and, and uh, trying to rank things on YouTube or Google or what you know whatever, the way that we did it back then was so much different than it is now, and most of the information that you hear is completely out of date or it's uh, kind of like it's not re it's not really great information. I'll say that uh, in my opinion. Uh, so I wanted to do this in a way to kind of tell people what I do on a daily basis. Uh, when it comes to creating content, whether that's in video, whether that's uh, on a website uh, for my job, um, because using the right keywords, finding the keywords the right way, and then using them for your blog posts, uh, almost it almost gives you a, uh, an advantage. And if you can do a couple of things that I'm going to tell you about later that are going to give you a, a competitive advantage, then you can really come out on top. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So first, let me dive into how you can find keywords for your blog, how to find blogging keywords, okay? So, number one is you're gonna have to have a main topic keyword. Now, don't start out thinking like, oh, I gotta fit everything into this keyword and use this keyword a certain number of times. That's something that they did in the past. Doesn't work like that now. Essentially, you want to write based on the topic that is in the keyword, all right? And you want to uh, take that keyword that you have and you want to first always start with Google or YouTube or, or someplace where people consume content, right? Find out what uh, basically people are searching when they search that keyword. So you would type it in to, let's say it's Google. And Google has that little drop-down bar that comes down, right? And YouTube does the same, where it gives you little suggestions. That's auto-suggest. These suggestions are what people typically are looking for when they're searching that keyword. So if you type that keyword in and you get those suggestions, make a little notepad file and write that down in there because those things are what people are searching for. All right? Also... If you're on Google and you search on Google, a lot of times you'll see these little, uh, I forgot what it's called, but like right at the top, it'll be like a question that's answered. Or there might be like three or four questions just sitting there and you have to click them to open them. Those questions are questions that people are typically looking for answers for when they search that information. So copy those down, those questions down, put them in a notepad file. And then finally, go down to the bottom of the Google search and it'll have a list of about eight to 10 keywords and just take all of those keywords and put them in your file. So everything that you've just collected uh, is either a long tail keyword typically uh, with the questions and so on and so forth, or it's an LSI keyword, which stands for latent semantic, I forgot what the I stands for, I think it's latent semantic index. But LSI keywords are just different ways of saying the same thing. They're semantically different, but they mean the same thing. All right, so once you have that list of keywords, right, I, what I like to do, I use two keyword tools, right? And I use this for my main, uh, I use this, these with my main keyword, right? I'll use keywords everywhere, which if, you're, if you have that on your Chrome browser, then all you have to do is type in your search and everywhere you go, you'll see uh, Google's estimated volume per month for that keyword. And then I will also use Ubersuggest, which is at ubersuggest.io. I use that a lot of times because it gives you a, a, uh, com a competitive score, right? So it lets you know how hard it will be for you to rank. And I just go in there and I filter it based on uh, the max SEO score of 30. So everything 30 and under is easier to, to rank with, all right? Especially if you're a beginner. Um, from there, you'll have a ton of keywords, okay? 
Now, all you have to do is pick out maybe like three to five of these keywords that go really well, especially uh, especially if they're if they say your main keyword. Those will be good. Also, if they're question key uh, questions uh, that are based on the keyword, or or if it's based on a question that is the keyword, those are really good to use because all you have to do is answer those questions. All right. Now, before you start writing. One of the good things to do is look at the search for your main keyword and look at who's ranking, what they're writing about, and what is, especially the the number one spot. Whoever's in the number one spot is basically the website that answers the customer's query the best, right? Doesn't mean that they're perfect. It doesn't mean that they're not able to be outranked. It just means that you have to make sure that your answer is this much better, right? So, knowing what they write about. So, for example, if it's if you uh, your main keyword is tennis shoes, and you see something about how to make sure you buy the right size tennis shoes online, that should be something. Something in your article should say that should teach that. Um, But you can also add more content to that or add different types of content, and it may be a better fit for the audience as a whole. All right, so now that you know all of that, you can go ahead and write your content. And what I do is I make a quick outline using my LSI keywords and my latent semantic uh, keywords, or not my latent semantic, my long tail and my LSI keywords. I'll write all those down, and I'll have a, a separate file next to it, and I write my headline Right or my title, and I write my description, and make sure that I sprinkle in LSI keywords in my description. But I want my main keyword to be in my title, preferably at the beginning of the title, within the first three to five words max. All right, that helps me to to basically signal to Google, yes, this is about this, and it also helps the people who are searching see that you're going to address their main keyword topic. All right. After that, I take all of the long tail keywords that I picked, three to five keywords that I picked, and I just basically go through and I write something for each of them, probably about 300 to 500 words. Doesn't really, I don't really count it, but I kind of, I make sure that it's meaty enough to where I'm diving into the topic fully, where somebody would read it and feel like they got a, a good value uh, from the content that I produced, right? Um, and that's that's really the main thing you have to do, all right, and you want to also sprinkle in those LSI keywords in your in your three to five hundred words uh, for each subheading, uh, and that's going to help you rank a lot better in for multiple different keywords. This is how you get go from a keyword that may only have a thousand uh, searches a month to ranking for ten keywords that all total may bring you five or ten thousand uh, searches a month. So. You really have to take your time with it. Uh, give yourself a good a good amount of time your first few times to make sure you have done everything. All right, and then finally, once you do that, you are ready to post and publish. So hopefully, this has helped you guys out. Um, if it did, give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about how to write this content, or you or you have any questions about anything in general, leave them under the description or not the description. Ah, leave them in the comment section. All right. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It's Mike Marlboro signing out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.